follows the center. The presiding is Elder Frederick Tamia, the Area 70. And uh, Elder David Kalibala, I'm conducting. The chorister will be President Okello. We're going to have an opening hymn, uh, 226. So I hope you all have the, the printed out the hymns with you. And the opening prayer will be offered by Sister Rachel Namoge. We recognize as take presidents and members of Kampala, Uganda, North and South Stakes. We're happy to have uh, the state president of the South Stake, President Kelama Ambrose. Um, I'm actually his first councillor in the Kampala, Uganda, South Stake. And we're happy to have uh, President Frederick Chambode, Kampala, Uganda, South Stake president, as well as uh, President Ebaju, uh, his councillor. After the opening hymn, and then I will come forth for the rest of the program. So, uh, Sister. Sister Rachel, as a prayer for the, uh, to give the opening prayer, uh, President Okello can chorister the music for us. Thank you. education that we have attained. Some of us have stopped at BYU Pathway Connect and others have continued with certificates. 
but we are really grateful for the opportunity that we had to attain an education. As Latter-day Saints, we know that education is not just a good thing, but a commandment. We pray that those of us who have not yet continued with the certificates, thou may give us the courage and love to do so. We pray that even this education that we have attained may take us to higher heights, that it may brighten our future. We pray humbly for thy spirit to be in our midst as we celebrate this day. We pray for all the speakers of the day, that thou may bless them with wisdom and knowledge. And we also pray that thou may continue to guide and direct us in all the things that we do each and every day. We humbly pray all this in the name of our Savior, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Rachel, uh, for that wonderful prayer. And thank you, everyone, for the wonderful voices sung. Um, as already mentioned, you look so lovely. Uh, however, there is one request. Could we, um, could we have those ones wearing yellow, like to sit together, and those in blue, to sit together? Uh, for a much better presentation of our ceremony. Okay, could we do that? It's, uh, uh, I think, wonderful exercise to start with. All right, so the blues can sit, okay. Yeah, blues can sit, can we say here, uh, on this row? Yeah, blues sit together and yellows sit together. Okay. And let us uh, utilize the front seats. Eh? All right, thank you, thank you for that. All right, now uh, should be aware that uh, we are live. So this is a memorable day for us. This is our second graduation. The first one uh, was uh, 9th October 2021. Uh, so this is the second one, uh, 30th July 2022. So it's just a memorable moment. Of course, uh, some of us here are not members or to say friends of the church and uh, those who could be viewing us as well in the public um, some may not know about the church okay so it is our duty and responsibility to inform uh, everyone who we are okay as the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints so a short brief the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is an international Christian church founded in 1830 with headquarters in Salt Lake City, Utah, USA. The church has over 30,000 congregations in more than 160 countries and territories. Each of these congregations is a local group of saints who serve, teach, inspire, and mentor each other as they strive to overcome personal challenges and hardships. And each is led by non-paid leaders selected from the congregation who serve on a limited time volunteer basis. The church provides gospel resources and programs in over 110 languages. It also operates several universities, a religious education program for youth and young adults 
with enrollment of more than 400,000 in 170 countries. Family, family Search, the world's largest genealogical organization, and Lalde St. Charities, a vast humanitarian aid program that provides nearly uh, 1 billion US dollars annually in world, worldwide relief. Brigham Young University is founded and operated by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which offers its members and the public with an affordable and quality education. So about BYU Path Worldwide Connect Online Education in Uganda. Applicants over 17 years of age or with high school academic achievements enroll for a one-year pathway online program with BYU Idaho, which prepares them to join Brigham Young University for undergraduate online studies at discounted tuition costs. Pathway Connect courses involve life skills, professional and university skills, and they are designed to help students learn foundational skills, build confidence, and develop spirituality. All courses count toward an online degree. The BYU Pathway program started in Uganda in September 2019. Since then, over 260 stu students countrywide have completed this one-year pathway program. Over 40 university students have further completed at least a first certificate, while others are due. For your information, in the previous uh, graduation, the, the first one, uh, we also had over 100 members complete pathway and uh, over 20 complete university certificates. So for the tuition costs, uh, members of the church will pay $6 a credit. And for one to complete the one year program, one will need like 18 US dollars, which is very affordable. So to make a quick calculation, if someone is to complete a bachelor's degree and a BYU pathway program, uh, they, they will pay like 800 US dollars on this discounted rate. Because every credit costs six dollars, and to have a bachelor's you need 120 credits. Okay. Why do we need a BYU pathway online program? Because it's cheaper. If you compare it to a student, Studying at the BYU Idaho campus in the USA, they will pay 180 US dollars per credit, and uh, estimated cost for a bachelor's would be 24,000 US dollars. So, we are blessed to to have this education at a discounted rate. BYU Pathway Worldwide provides access to especially best degrees completely online at an affordable price. For the degrees and certificates, in partnership with BYU Idaho and Ensign College, Boy Path Worldwide provides access to more than 30 online certificate courses that build into a set of focused bachelor's degrees. Students may choose from one of six bachelor's degrees, mainly applied business management, applied technology, applied health communication, marriage, and family studies, or professional studies. All programs are developed based on a mixture of market demands and opportunities for employment. So it's a very flexible way of earning a bachelor's degree with BYU Pathway because you can complete one certificate after another, you know, depending on your various schedules. Some of us work, others have families. Okay. 
So the Buya pro Pathway Program, it uh, gives us an opportunity to, to complete a bachelor's degree after taking three different certificates. And in this way, we can be able to get a better job before graduating. When you get two certificates, it's equivalent to an associate degree. If you get three, then that's equivalent to a bachelor's degree. So you have the opportunity to have uh, a certificate, uh, an associate degree, and also a bachelor's. And how beautiful is it? And of course, this uh, program is uh, mostly for the members of the church because uh, there are limited uh, places for friends of the church. In this program, we also find uh, religious courses. That is why to qualify for this discounted rate, we have to attend the one year of BYU Pathway where we're able to uh, participate in academic and religious courses. So that's the beauty about it. So, uh, of course, I know uh, many of us have wonderful experiences about BYU Pathway. I'm one of them. I'm uh, a pioneer with many others, and I graduated in the, in the previous graduation. And I have wonderful testimonies about Pathway. But we may not have enough time to hear from each one of you. So we're just going to invite uh, if, a few of the students to share their experiences about BYU Pathway. Uh, we're going to hear from first um, Elma Nabolime is, uh, uh, is, a, is a friend of the church actually. So she's going to share with us her experience about BYU Pathway. And after her we shall hear from uh, James Ochara who is a certificate holder under BYU Pathway. Sister Elmo. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Like President Kalibala said, I'm Elma Nablimi. And I'm a Pathway Connect graduate, though continuing. I got to know about Pathway Connect through a friend of mine who became a sister. She's called Irene Kiza Namudu. I was working at UBC. And one day I was asking her, what's your program tomorrow? And she was like, ah, tomorrow I'm finishing my exams. I'm going to be busy. Na, 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 na. So I was like, oh, so you're studying? Yes, I'm studying. Uh, actually, where are you studying? Huh? It's, it's BYU. And what's BYU? It's an American university. And I was like, hey, wow. God, this girl has money. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so she did tell me at length about BYU or Pathway Connect. So maybe it wasn't the right time, but when time came, she opened up and told me about this opportunity. And I was like, I must enroll, because education, I, I felt like this is an affordable golden opportunity everyone should embrace. We all know that education here is really expensive. Attaining a degree here, it's really expensive, because I've attained one and I know how, how expensive it was. And at the end of the day, it won't equal up to what you can get here. So my journey with Pathway Connect was kind of challenging because as soon as I had, as soon as I had, as soon as I had enrolled, I conceived. I'm married. I didn't tell you. Yes, I'm married with three children. So when I conceived, my husband was like, "But you're already in your future. Why are you? Why are you even studying?" <laughs> and I was like, and I, it was funny, but it's true. It, the more I thought, I thought about it, I was like, I think he's right. 
already have children. I think I'm living in my future. But I see nothing, nothing wrong with continuing with education. Because at the end of the day, I'm showing my children a good example. And you never know where this opportunity can take me. Uh, when I conceived, I gave birth when I was still studying. So time came for those exams. You all know you have to be on camera and you have a baby. So I was like, eh, now the way my home is, is loud and people are shouting and children are playing, I should be doing my exams in the wee hours of the night. But um, I remember there was a time I, 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 I had a schedule to do my exam in the night and I had started it. And you know how strict those, uh, they, 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 are, they are on camera. So the baby started crying. It, she woke up and started crying. So I, I had no option than to, work, to get up, go get the baby, come sit with the baby. Ha. They just closed the exam. And I was like, yeah, but these people can't see that I'm holding a baby. <laughs> they didn't see it. And I tried talking to those online to help me out. They were like, ha, we are so sorry. We can't do anything about it. And what hurt me is I was almost finishing. So I was like, eh, what am I going to do? So the following day, I talked to my, to my lecturer, and he was like, I'm going to give you another opportunity. So this time, I was like, ha, I shouldn't play around with this opportunity. So I told the girl who helps me out at home and told her, you know, sleep with your phone on. When the baby cries, I'll, I'll call you and don't pick. Just wake up, go get the baby. You can bring the baby to me. You prepare the milk for her as I'm holding the baby because I have to stay on camera. She was like, okay. So she did that the next day. The baby cried. She did that, and I managed to finish my exam, and I passed. BYU or um, Pathway Connect is not an easy journey, but it's doable. It's possible. Whatever you set your mind on, so long as you really love you'll do it. You can do it. You can attain it. It's doable. And for those who are wearing yellow, my sister here has said um, for us who are some of us, she was praying and she was like, some of us have finished with a certificate. You, this is an open door. You can always come back. You can, because you can take time off to rest and still come back. So let us not end at that and be like, you've finished because you've graduated and got the Pathway Connect certificate. Otherwise, um, I, well, I can't live without talking about the gatherings you used to have. Um, I really found them, I really found them, should I call it fun? They used to be exciting, Brother Francis, not so. Yeah, to us they used to be exciting because we had, we had leaders who are called to lead, not who just want to lead. So they used to make this journey beautiful for all of us, that we could not wait for Thursday to come so that we come to for this. And um, if I'm to compare the online gatherings and um, physical gatherings, President, I will prefer the physical gatherings. Because online, you, like, you feel like you're doing this alone. And when you're challenged, you can easily give up. But here, when you meet, uh, there were times I felt like giving up. I, I, when I was pregnant, I was tired. I was like, oh, why am I? Even my husband is saying I'm already living in my future. Why am I disturbing myself? But every time I could ask my colleagues, they could be like, it's not easy for all, for all of us. And one opened up to me and told me, actually, I last ate yesterday. And I had to walk to this place to come and study. And I was like, eh, Kumbe, for me, I don't even have problems. Because if I could compare the two, I was like, mm -mm, I'm just playing around. So I think we should go back to our physical gatherings uh, where we can talk to ourselves as students. We can empower ourselves and uh, you never know. Those who are giving up, I have people who have, who have called to, uh, to, to join this opportunity and some have given up on the way because they feel it's hard to juggle life and studying at the same time. But when you have people who are doing it, they can always tell you it's doable, you can't do it, it's possible. So, I'm, I'm requesting, well, we can even pray about it, since here everything leans more on God. We can pray about it so that, since COVID is, now we know how to live with it. Yeah. The other thing is, um, um, just like I started by saying education is really expensive here. When you get this call, 
some of us are selfish because you want people to know you have an American certificate. You don't want to tell people that it's really affordable. Let's not be selfish. Because there are parents out there who really want their students to continue, who really want their children to continue, but they do not have the finances. Yet, this is really affordable. We all know it is. Just like Elder Kalibala has told us, when he mentioned the figure that you need, really, and we don't give it, uh, we don't give it up at the same time, it's really affordable for everyone. Because me, I'm paying my tuition. My husband told me I'm living in my future, and I, I'm like, I want to bother him, so I pay my tuition. And I feel happy, because right now I'm wearing a gown. Those who, who didn't join me, now they are home. And I'm going to send pics. I'm going to be proud and send pics. I'm like, yes, that American university I told you, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm continuing, you know? <laughs> uh, so uh, Pathway Connect is a golden opportunity we should, all, uh, we should all embrace. We should all share out to our, to our friends and family. Let them not miss out on this opportunity for it doesn't only groom us physically, financially, professionally, but above all, it teaches us God and our purpose on earth. Because when you know God, you know your reason for being created and what you have to do to believe. <laughs> A good example for others. Otherwise, that has been it from me. Thank you. Morning, brothers and sisters. Yeah, I'm um, by the name James Ochoa, and I'm grateful for our speech, though I'm not living in my future. <laughs> I bet my future is a little bit far, but uh, I'm working towards it anyway. So, I'm a BYU student, or you know already, and. First of all, because before I say anything at all, I'd like to say congratulations to all of you for the great work you have done, including myself. I mean, like, there are some other people, I imagine, who have had their stuck in the middle of the night trying to do assignment before the deadline, and they know what this means to them and they know that this is worth it. About BYU, I'm just gonna share my experience and why I joined it. Uh, President Ukdov said something, he said, the what informs, but the why transforms. And that comes to, if I try to explain a little bit, the what informs, and then the why transforms. So that shows that when we, are jo we have joined BYU, the why, the reason we have joined, will give us much more motivation to move forward than just what is it, just being curious and just want to know what is inside, and you're not willing to hack or go far. I always tell to our Fellow BYU students that, you know, when you jump in this, just put a, don't just tiptoe or just put a little bit of your feet in the water, but you'll be ready to walk in the water and get wet. And if you do that, we'll be fine. So before I joined BYU, I remember I was studying in Utamu, in Bugolobi, and before COVID hit, and I paid a tuition for around 1.4, that's like a tuition plus functional fee, but then before 2020, I just started thinking of a backup plan, as they always teach in missions, you gotta have a backup plan. So I started thinking of a backup plan and I, I it took like more than a semester just looking at BYU. Every single time I go and browse their website and try to learn as much as possible. But then when COVID, before COVID hit, I'd made my mind to start Pathway Connect. So I started Pathway Connect and when I was almost getting done, after no one is going to school, all schools were shut down. And I feel like it was cool because still I had something to do. But then when lockdown was getting done around September, I started getting message emails, emails from school that school is beginning, you have your tuition due. And then I mean, looking at BYU, they were teaching me with a lot of things. And I could believe what, I was, what they were teaching, even in March, 
for instance, there's something that is just funny. People always get like in maths, you get a lot, find your hex, find your hex, and you don't know why you need to find your hex in maths. But then BOI was like teaching the how, the why do you need to solve that. And I was like, this is it. So I had to decide whether I have to continue with BYU or go back to school. So I sat down and I calculated all the tuition. And I'm like, I'm going to need $700 to finish the whole BYU. But then if I need to go there, I'm going to need about $5 million to complete my studies. So I, I put the numbers down and I pray about it. And when the other friend asked, are you coming back to school? I said, I'll think about it. But as time goes on, my mind changed completely. I'm like, I'm changing my direction. And that's why I got in BYU. And every single day I'm in BYU, I'm grateful for the opportunity. And I'm grateful to learn. Because I feel like I got skills I, that I'm looking for. And someone once asked me that if you study BYU, will you be employed in Uganda? I just told the person that I don't mind about that. All I mind is, do I have the skills? Are they giving me? And that's why I do it, because I'm getting the skills. And that's what I'm yearning for. I wish I could just grab every single thing, be why you're teaching me. And then I just take that as part of my life. Uh, as BYU student, there's something I uh, always say. As she was talking about, if you are studying online, there are dark days that you're in the corner of your room and you're alone and you're struggling with your assignment and you have no one to talk to. And then you even feel like giving up after skipping a week of not submitting your assignment. They keep piling. But when you get there, which I'm sure all of us will get there, or oh, I've been there already, don't forget to stick to your friends. Call on your friends, and if possible, you can meet maybe once or twice a week, and that will give you a spirit to move forward. Because if you do it alone, that's just gonna be a hard work. You'll need a lot of willpower to, to do that alone, but as long as you're in contact with your friends and you rely on Heavenly Father in every single thing you're doing, you'll be able to move forward. And not only that, when we are in BYU, it's kind of like came up with this, in order to focus and to move forward, what I do, I focus on about three or four things only. I focus on work, which I think about it, and then studies, family and calling. And nothing in studies and family, which is including my BYU friends and my calling. And I think within these four things only, I don't want to go out in order for me to be much more focused. Because if you just walk up and just end up being in other part, you end up you have spent a day already then you're going to have a hard time and then you feel like dropping out. And I realize while I'm doing BYU, something that I've realized that time is crucial and time is really so important. If you're wasting your time, and a BYU student knows that, if you spend five hours just sitting and doing nothing, you know that at the end of the day, you start regretting that. So BYU have just taught me how to manage my time and use it very well. I'm grateful for this opportunity and for the things that I'm learning in BYU. And I know that this program has come to bless our lives. There are times you want to take this thing as if people are doing it. But I, I will say that if you could take it personally, as if your life rely on it, please do it. You'll be able to move forward and you'll be able to get more out of these studies. I know that this program will lead us somewhere and that we'll be able to have a wonderful future other than being comfortable right now because I, I think the future is tomorrow, not today. And I know we can get there. And I know if we focus, we are going to be there. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I um, want to thank fellow students for the wonderful testimony, Bon. Could we give them a hand clap? 
Yeah, this time we had to use the Kacho hall so we can take pictures freely and also clap freely. Yes, that's why we avoided the chapel because we don't do those things in the chapel. It's a sacred place. So this is a place for ceremonies like these ones. All right, so um, just to, to, to give you a brief about uh, certificates. Now, uh, the certificates, if you pass the certificates, they are sent from uh, the university, BYU uh, Pathway, Idaho office. So the certificates that we issue are the ones that we have received from BYU. Okay. So that's why in the first graduation, those that had received the certificates then were the ones that graduated. And of course, the students who, who, are, who are in the like batch we are able to make alternative certificates. However, the original ones will be coming in. Okay. So, so we should be mindful that there are some students whose certificates haven't come, so they may graduate in the next graduation. So we shall be having many graduations as often. Uh, so it is a moment to present uh, the certificates uh, which Elder Kamiya will be handing over. And I invite Mr. Kalibala to, to come forward, please. Can come here. Um, is she familiar? Is the familiar face? Yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's my wife. Uh, we're the pioneer missionaries. Uh, from 2019, when Pathway came to Uganda, we were the first missionaries, and uh, we love the students so much. We love you so much, even up to now. And they termed us headmaster and headmistress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you, because that comforts us when we spend sleepless nights trying to, to, serve, to serve you. So thank you so much. We are humbled. And we're happy when you graduate. We graduated in the previous one, okay? So we leave the gowns for you this time, and then you'll see us again uh, coming in the next one. <laughs> All right. Um, so you're going to read all the names. So she's going to read the names, and you'll come forward for the certificates. I'm going to get them there. So once you hear your name, then actually the, the stake presidents should shake their hands. Maybe it's better down here. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, our stake presidents, they also great ones. <laughs> the hand clap. So as, as leaders, we lead from the front. Now there are some members refusing to join the program. You should look at us, your leaders. We're in the program, and we have families, we have degrees, masters, but we are in the program because there's something special about this program. Yeah, so as you come, uh, I think uh, Elder Kami can come beside because uh, the presidents will shake their hands, and then, and then you. Sorry? Yes. Yeah. So, so which means. Uh, um, so, our best. Okay, that's the certificates, eh? So, as... Should I give it to President Kamiya? Okay, so you can read. Okay, as they come, good, perfect. So you want to, to read as you give? Can you give it to Yeah, you can. Yeah? Yeah. The first one is Leona Kasule Nakaiza. Okay. Aura Patrick. Jamil Shimanga. 
the gracious Lutu Nsampumia. So, the suggestion is you can use this line, okay, in that format. Okay. All right, continue. Janet Lamaro. Oh. Maureen Amogin <laughs> Elisha Mugeni <laughs> Lydia Nabambulide <laughs> Joseph Sengova <laughs> Juliet Namsoke Dennis Mlondo, Mary Nachinene, Harriet Nanyonjo Mugenyi, let's use the middle all the way as we come, Charles. Kasozi Sechiranji. <laughs> Mukasa Joseph Nkalubo. <laughs> Lilian Okumu. <laughs> Namusisi Claire Nanyange. Amina Nakaliawa Estaros Akero Edward Sechiravi Innocent Imazi Brian Nyombi Sheila Nyamuiza John Katerega Douglas Sironda Way Julie Albert Bokari Christine Nasirumbi Jolly Nambozo Mugera Tat Mugera Richard <laughs> She's presenting Julian Nambozo. <laughs> representing um actually we have to read out all the graduates we know some are abroad but we're going to recognize them anyway yeah that's why we're, we're reading out everyone that graduated some already abroad okay yeah. okay nakato nora nakasi mark otori rose nanyonjo Martin Insekanavo
Yeah. Hasi Gertrude Rufafa. Patrick Chikure Mtiaba. <laughs> Alan Chibirango. <laughs> Sadiq Kajimba. <laughs> Judith Charity Nansamba. <laughs> Sandra Navachibi. Jeremiah Kato, Peter Charles Otim, Ambrose, President Ambrose Silva Kilama, Obed Barak Bende, Uchi Mike, Eddie Gawire, Raymond Okumu, Laniero Oyulu. Okay. Richard Martin Ruther Olego Okelo. <laughs> Alan Ojara. James Okora Ochora Ronnie Chambade Sarah Chambade Sarah Nakanuaji, Christine Lydia Chambade, Alex Lavalpin, Oswad Ngondwe, Isaiah Fortunate, Dalvin Gonza Serunkuma, Francis Semugonda, Nicholas Semfumaranga, Stefan Adebasiku. <laughs> Adebasiku. Okay. That one. <laughs> Arinda Osabat. Rachel Namuge. Dennis Onen, 
Brenda Ayevale. Simon Anguya. Blasio Luboyera. Esther Chiseka. Julius Ojan. Kak Aguto Atong. Yafesi Bright. Rona Ayevare. Peter O'Queer. Nathan David Amaral. Yafesi Bright. Zaina Apori. Tumwe CJ Nelson. Nanda Derek. Doreen Ann Anyango. Cyrus Sechiranda. Francis Wailaga. Edmond Ochaya. Livingston Wangira. Simon Ahimbisiwe. Mukisa Sharif. Kasifana Ntumbwe. Angelina Namusambi. Namudu Irene Namsisi. Mary Nabatanzi. Mary Navatanzi, Michael Matovu, Ronald Muhumuza, Nathan Katambuka Kanyesije. Ronald Sempala, Brian Bunny 
Rubanga Ken. President Frederick Arnold Chambade. Navalime Elma. <laughs> Jonathan Mugaga. Christine Titi Asimwe. <laughs> Doreen Ann Anyango. Yiparos. <laughs> 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 Brenda Atinedi, <laughs> Diana Talemwa, <laughs> Albert Tumwe Sije. Anet Nankumba, Monica Namaja, Maureen Kisache, Jacqueline Inkinzi, Jamil Kajumba Katerega, Joan Natukunda, <laughs> Juliet Nasuna, <laughs> Gerard Woniara, <laughs> <laughs> Innocent Mwanda, Jacqueline Ako, Edmond Ochaya, Francis Wailaga. Okay. <laughs> Some were repeated. So if I call you again, of course, you'll come back for another blessing. <laughs> Zaina Apori, <laughs> Livingstone Waigara, Waigira, Simon Ahimbisibwe, Mukisa Sharif, <laughs> Nandavi Derek, <laughs> Livingstone Wangira, Nasif Cheyune. 
Esther Naudo, John Mande, Joy Blessed, Gloria Prosha Aoma, So these ones completed their certificates. Moses Masendi acquired the certificate in administrative assistant. <laughs> James Okora acquired a certificate in community health planning and implementation. Congratulations. Rosemary Appeal acquired a certificate in community health methods and evaluation. Nanyang Eclair Namsisi acquired the certificate in teaching English as a foreign language. Congratulations. <laughs> Ivan Kiza acquired the certificate in community health planning and implementation. Um, still Ivan Kiza acquired a <laughs> certificate in community health methods and evaluation. So Irene Namudu Namusisi acquired a certificate in social media marketing. <laughs> the wife to Brother Ivan Keys. <laughs> Lastly, I myself, though my certificate is not here, I acquired a certificate in computer programming. Can I have a microphone? All right. Yes, so uh, for your information, these certificates, they are sent from the university. So, but it's a student's responsibility to request for it. If you don't request for it, then we haven't received it. However, we have a list of completers of this batch uh, maybe the names will be read. If you already come, you may not come, but uh, uh, if you haven't yet and hear your name, just come for a handshake as your certificate will be coming later when you request for it because we don't do it on your behalf. Okay? So they're ready and your name and just come. Uh. Aguto Atong acquired a certificate in administration assistant has already come, I think. Oh, okay. So. Aran Chibirango acquired the certificate in entrepreneurship. <laughs> Alan Award acquired the certificate in social media marketing. <laughs> Andrew Harris Douglas, general studies. <laughs> President Charles 
Kasozi Sechilanji, acquired a certificate in family history research. David Gideon Katimbo acquired three certificates. He's also a missionary. One, community health methods. Two, applied health. Three, community health planning. <laughs> so David Katimbo has also completed his associate degree at BYU. Diana Nambi, a certificate in basic accounting. <laughs> Diana Talemwa acquired a certificate in administration assistant. <laughs> Irene Namudu, social media marketing. <laughs> Ivan Malcolm Kiza, community health planning. James Okara, oh, sorry, Ochora. <laughs> okay, they didn't specify here. John Baraza also uh, accomplished his associate degree at BYU. <laughs> Joseph Bio accomplished his occupational safety and health certificate. Kato Jeremiah acquired a certificate in social media marketing. <laughs> Patrick Chikurem Chaba acquired a certificate in social media marketing. <laughs> Chisembo Robert Wilson acquired a certificate in community health methods. Moses Balsendi, administration assistant. <laughs> Nicholas Senfu Maranga, uh, a certificate in entrepreneurship. <laughs> President Omuya Ronald acquired a certificate in community health methods. <laughs> Raymond Okumu, construction and field supervision. Rosemary Appeal, Community Health Methods, Community Health Planning. So those are two certificates. <laughs> Semugabi Martin, Web and Computer Programming. <laughs> Sophie Kagoya, Community Health Planning. <laughs> Semugonda Francis, Auto Science Technology. Tumuhire Ivrin, Marriage, Family, and Human Relations Certificate. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, that has been the issuing of the certificates. Um, some came in late, so you'll get a certificate later. But thank you, everyone, for celebrating, you know, f for each other. Okay. So, uh, final applause and hand clap for each one of us. <laughs> All right, thank you. So, please, you can take your seats. And then, uh, moving on to the program. Are we going to... Here are some remarks from our stake presidents. So we shall first invite uh, President Klammer to give some remarks, uh, who is also a graduate, and then after President Chambade to give some remarks as well, who is also a graduate, and, and, and after the presiding officer, Elder Kamiya, will come and address us, President Klammer.
Well, congr congratulations to all of you. Uh, uh, my message first will be addressed to those who graduated today. And I say congratulations the second time. Uh, uh, you are on the path uh, to success. And I forgot my phone. Let me pick it. Uh, to you, uh, I have a quote uh, from Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman, um, I lived many years ago in the time of slavery in America, and she found herself to freedom. And she had, she had many quotes, and I'll quote to you this, that if you hear the dogs, keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, keep going. If there is a shouting after you, keep going. Don't ever stop. Keep going. If you want a taste of freedom, keep going. If you want good life, it's now my own. Keep going. The future belongs to those who have education, not the kind of education that our parents had because the world is going online. Now, those who despise online things, you belong to the past. And by and by, you'll struggle in the future that will find you. Many years ago, uh, when education was introduced to Uganda, there are many people who had reasons for not joining education. But by and by, the future caught up with them. You can never learn enough. And I want you also who have graduated today, you have learned many skills, some of which I've had people mention about. And I want you to be eager in applying the skills you have learned. Uh, the mission of the Pathway Education is threefold. Uh, it is a three in one to make you a better leader in the home, in the church, and in your community with one goal to make you a leader. You are not just a student. Today you didn't just acquire a certificate, but you are a leader in that field that you hold the certificate in your hand today. Please, every day of your life, find a way to apply the, the skill you've learned. That's what will differentiate you from the rest of the world. My second message is to those who may not be here. And, but if you are here and you are thinking of quitting, um, I'm here to encourage you to get started. Uh, what in my old age has taught me also is that I've grown to see that successful people are eager to succeed. And people who, f who are less successful are, are always missing. Now, the people who lack education are not here. The people who lack education and need it the most have not enrolled in Pathway. If you have a history of along your lineage, people have not been so eager to go to school. I want you to break that line and be the first in your in your lineage to to be enthusiastic about education. It will do you so much good. It will do you so much good. Education is a differentiator. It differentiates the ignorant from the learned. The Book of Mormon says that many people became rich because of their many chances of learning, and others became very poor because of their no chance of learning. The church has come to bridge that gap that those who cannot afford education can now afford it and that will bridge the gap between the poor and the rich, the ignorant and the educated. You are such a blessed people. Please tell your friends, tell your in-laws, tell your family, tell everyone about you. Education is more joy when all of us know. 
there is nothing beautiful about ignorance, about poverty, and about diseases. The things that we have known for the most part of our life. Above all, you are champions and leaders of our community. We can transform our environment and make it a better place for all of us. With us here, we have uh, people who graduated, and many of them you see here already have education. And many of you in the congregation or have already have fields of expertise. But I like the fact that you're very eager to always keep learning. Um, Brother Ochora, in your quote, you talked about the why, which, is, which transforms the individual. We are advocating for education at a time when people are saying, even though you have education, there are no jobs for you. Hmm? Yeah, there are no jobs for you. Um, but yes, it's true, there are many people who have education and don't have jobs. But the chance of them getting a job is higher than those who don't have education at all. I was at campus and we had an argument with my, with my professor who said that the richest man on earth does not have a degree. And I said, you're wrong. Uh, you are very wrong. With his ignorance, uh, Mr. Bill Gates, there's no way he could construct a, an international company without the help of those who are qualified in that field. He does not know very much about computer science than Brother Richard Okello does. And without the people who are educated like you, Microsoft would not have been what it is right now. In Uganda here, it is quoted or it is said that Sebagala, may his soul rest in peace, did not go to school, but yet he was a successful man. I wanted to know that he sent all his children to schools in America. If education was not important, he would have kept his children at home. Don't believe if anyone ever tells you that education is a waste of time. Now, I'll conclude my remarks like this. And using the word value, many organizations have organization, mission, statement, and values. A value is, is, a, is one's judgment of that which they consider to be important in life. Education is important in life, and you have chosen that, and you've made that statement today, that you value education. And that which is valuable to us, we make it a priority. If you earn an income, make sure that you, your priority is in your education. And when you are doing anything, first think about your education before you think about any other thing. That's how we set priorities. And including the time for education is important. I congratulate, you, I congratulate all of you upon this achievement. But like Harriet Tubman said, keep going. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, President Chidama, and uh, thank you, um, Elder and Sister Karibara, for organizing this uh, event. And uh, thank you, Eda Kamiya, for gracing this uh, occasion. I'm grateful also to be here, and uh, I'm grateful for my achievement, first of all. This is a great example. It's not easy to achieve this. And there are many people out there who have uh, thought that this is very difficult. But I like the remarks of President Kilama. Say when they're going get stuff, get going. Don't give up. We have uh, many things that uh, we are yet to receive. To all of you who are insisting in this um, path. Education is not, uh, it's not simply a gift, but it's uh, a commandment. Every father commanded that we should acquire knowledge, we should acquire 
understanding. In Doctrine and Covenants, we read that the glory of God is intelligence. Everything that we seek after learning in this life is an added advantage upon us. And it will be another added advantage in the life to come. What we are going to go in the life to come with is a testimony and the knowledge that we are acquiring right now. One of the insurance companies here, they have a slogan of saying that when you want to invest in your future, now is the time to get the seeds. And one of the seeds I want to tell you is education. Uh, the first speaker mentioned that she, 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 she learned of this from a friend that BYU, American universities are uh, offering education at relatively cheap cost. And so she was motivated to join. And uh, someone said that you are in your, you are in your adulthood. And education may not be so much a reason why, you know, you should continue and acquiring more education. I want to tell you that even those who are 60 and 50, they can still acquire education. Learning is not uh, something that you're going to stop until Heavenly Father calls you. So we should seek after that glory and intelligence that Heavenly Father uh, commands us to. There's a quote from Elder Gary E. Stevenson, quote, with all thy getting, get understanding. For you to get understanding, you need to acquire education. You need to read books, and you need to equip yourself with the knowledge that you need to move in this life. So education is, uh, is key to our learning and to our success. Of course, there are many people who have succeeded in this life without proper education, but along the way, they learn and they acquire skills for them to succeed. So the thinking of uh, working hard with little education is not right. We should uh, acquire more skills and learning through education. Uh, the scripture um, continue to tell us that all truth and religious, whether secular, are included in God's plan for our salvation and happiness. And the Lord has given each and, one and every one of us gifts, and uh, these gifts are to be used in, for us to become happy and also successful. Sexual learning is not considered mainly for gaining wealth, but is also considered in gaining the understanding that even in life to come, we will have to employ those skills that we are acquiring right now. So let us learn and let us uh, seek learning whenever we have opportunity. BYU um, is offering this at a subsidized uh, cost for every one of us to afford going to school. And all those who have acquired degrees or masters and PhDs, they can still take time to learn. In my gathering, I remember people say that many of these things that we are learning right now, we never heard of them. The way we are learning, the way we are studying right now, we never had a chance to learn like this. Meaning that our system may need to you know, improve for us to cope up with the standard of learning internationally. So I want to encourage everyone, even those who are not here, to enroll and study through this program of uh, BYU Pathway and Idaho. Brothers and sisters, we want to congratulate all of you and want to encourage all of you to continue. Continue seeking after learning and don't give up. The world ahead of you needs people who are educated, people who have skills. All those people who invent new things, they study a lot of books and they do a lot of research. There's no way you can do that if you don't have a background of education. Education is key to success. 
I want to bear wit witness of that. And I know that what we are learning right now will be useful in the days ahead. Even right now, many of you are going to begin writing good applications to seek after employment. And many of you may also start your own businesses because of the skills and the knowledge that you have obtained. This is the reason why you are acquiring this skill and to become disciples of Jesus Christ who can serve with a purpose and who can become self-reliant and fulfill uh, the commandments of our Father in heaven. I bear witness of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, good morning. Good afternoon already. Good afternoon to everyone. What a sight to behold. What a sight to behold. You all look so glamorous in your beautiful gowns. Congratulations. Will you give yourselves a loud applause? You know, it, it, it gives me a lot of gratitude to see that what was a dream then is now coming into fruition. That what you were used to hear of in other places is now here for us to behold. It gives me such gratitude and pleasure and to thank the Lord that this is possible. So congratulations. I'd like to thank President uh, Edakali Bala and his wife for the amount of time they put in. These people put in a lot of time to see that you as students get what you're supposed to get in a good time and to encourage you and to talk to Salt Lake and to see that things happen. They put in a lot of time on top of them also being students. So I would like to also thank them very, very much with a loud applause. <laughs> Talking about gratitude. Gratitude drives many things. And the, the word gratitude was mentioned first by the first speaker, Nauli Mehia that she was grateful that she had gotten to know from uh, Sister, uh, Sister Kiza about this program. And when she heard, she didn't hesitate. She joined, despite the fact that she was heavy with the child. And she did her exams with the baby crying I felt so sad when she mentioned that uh, along the way, because she got up to go see the baby, you know, the, 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 uh, the computer was shut and she couldn't continue. Yet she was about to complete the examination. But she didn't lose hope. She didn't lose courage. She approached her lecturer who said, okay, I'll arrange a special examination for you, which happened. And now she is here. That is the Gratitude we are talking about. That is the courage we are talking about. In Uganda, there is a proverb that Echigwe Chimu Techilobeda Bana Kukolachi Kuzanya You know, you know a, a, a toddler when they are beginning to, to learn to walk, they will fall. But when they fall, they get up and begin to walk again. Just imagine if they fell down and re re remained on the ground. I never got up to begin to walk again. They saw the same with the life. In life, there are going to be so many challenges. 
There are going to be so many difficulties. But how do we overcome them? It's only those with the courage. It's only those that martial discipline and courage and determination that get up again to, to walk and pursue. And it's them that eventually become successful. So, um, once again, congratulations. Talking about physical classes, I agree. I agree we need to get back to physical classes. Because when there are physical classes, there's this encouragement. You know, it's very easy to lose, to lose courage when you're alone in your house and things become tough. You say, after all. But when you're in a group and you talk to others, they encourage you. They share their challenges with you. And like we heard from the speakers, then you get to realize that yours are even nothing compared to what other people are going through. And so you marshal courage and you get up and you begin to, to move. So I, I encourage that we resume physical classes. Discussion groups. You know, with discussion groups, you can learn so much. So, so, so much. So, even if there may not be a method to have discussion groups, we can do them informally. Once we get to know who your cosmates are, your three, your four, your five of you, why don't you form a discussion group? And that way, that is going to drive you way, 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 way much uh, uh, higher. So again, I encourage us to form those discussion groups. The cost of this education. Obtaining a degree at an average of $800. That's how many shillings? That's about uh, 2 million shillings or something, you know? Against 24,000, if you're in the US, $24,000. Or against six or seven or 10 or 15 million shillings, depending on which course you're pursuing. So I think uh, this is uh, just the benevolence of the church to see that us people in Africa can also obtain a valuable education. So let us not take it for granted. Take it, let us take it seriously. By the way, the church could have decided that for the first five years, for example, let's give this education free. They could have done that. But do you know what would have happened? We'd have only 10 people here. Because when you have free things, when you give people free things, they don't value them. Am I right? Yes. So that's why they ask us to pay only a token. Just imagine six dollars, you know, uh, 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 a cost unit. Just imagine. So, let us take this very, very seriously. Now, what is the purpose of education? What is the purpose of education? Let me read for you. Education is a means of achieving a world, number one, of peace, number two, of justice, number three, of freedom, number four, of equality. So without education, how do you equal to others? Without education, how do you get peace in the community? You see what's happening these days of Kataimba and all this stuff? These are people who don't have education. And they're looking for a way of survival. So if you're going to have peace, you're going to have education. If you're going to have freedom, you're going to have education. Thus, it's ex extremely important uh, for all. And take note of this. No good life is possible without education. No good life is possible without education. I remember the story of uh, Henry Ford. Henry Ford was an American. He's the man who started manufacturing cars in the 1800s. The Ford car we see today, he's the man who started it, Henry Ford. Now, Henry Ford didn't have much formal education. 
So when he would go to lobby government officials, um, people would laugh at him because he didn't have much formal education. So one time he decided when there was such a big meeting that he would go with his team of administrators, like President Kilama has, has told us. So when he got up to talk, he asked his team to stand up of lawyers, of engineers, of... Uh, so he said, you people all along you have been saying that I didn't have education. And therefore I couldn't go far. Look at this team. Look at this team. Meaning that education is important. So nobody can have a good life without education. And so, what does education give us? One, it develops skills in us. When you get a good education, then you'll get a skill. And it's a skill that will help you to make it in life. Two, enables one to be industrious. Enables one to be industrious. And what is to be industrious? To be diligent, to be hardworking, to be skillful, to be ingenious, and to be creative. That is given to us mainly by education. Then three, empowers the individual to face the challenges of life efficiently. Mark the word efficiently. We all face the challenges of life. But now when we are armed with education, you can face those challenges of life more efficiently because you have the knowledge. Therefore, we should seek knowledge, each one of us. And the pursuit of knowledge never ends. Actually, as speakers, we're speaking here, as people, we are getting up here to receive their certificates, and I was looking at some of them, and I know them, they have a degree already, and I was looking at uh, the president here, and I know they have a degree, and I know, for example, President Kilama even has a master's degree. I know President Kalabala here has a master's degree. So it, it began to dawn on me, <laughs> and said, but now you, you have been telling people to go back to school. <laughs> How about yourself? <laughs> eh. So I've been thinking, hmm. Umbe, now I must also do the thing. I must go back to school. So one of these days when you see me join you, please don't begin to laugh. <laughs> you know, the other day we were here. Was it last week? Yeah, last week. We were here for the FSY training. And then uh, Jackson, he has been said it here. Jackson, Jackson Makoto was making a presentation on a PowerPoint. And he said, you see, I learned this PowerPoint presentation in, in my class uh, uh, pathway. Mm. <laughs> I said, but this is one of my problems. <laughs> you know? And now look at this very young man has acquired this skill. I must come back. <laughs> I must come back. Um, therefore, uh, we must seek knowledge and wisdom throughout our lives. Throughout our lives. The certificates we have acquired today are just the beginning. Am I wrong? They're just a stepping stone. I was telling some people as I came in here. I was telling them, now today is the day to separate the boys, the, the men from the boys and the women from the girls. And they asked how. I said, we want to ask here today, how many are ready to pursue their courses until they acquire a degree? And there's those who are not yet sure are the boys. These ones who are sure that they are going to pursue it are the men. <laughs> the, the, the sisters, those who are ready are the women. The ones who are not sure are the girls. Let me ask by a show of hands, how many are ready to pursue it to the degree level? Beautiful. Clap for yourselves, please. <laughs> now, remember, you have put up your hands here in front of all of us. <laughs> 
So two years down the road, three years down the road, we shall be looking at you. And then we shall be asking at you. I mean asking you. Now when we ask you, don't get annoyed. <laughs> Learning helps enrich our lives. Learning helps enrich our lives. And helps us better serve God and others. Allow me to share this scripture with you. In Doctrine and Covenants 88. Doctrine and Covenants 88, uh, 118. Uh, is there somebody who can sit quickly and read it for us? Very, very quickly. As somebody else finds Doctrine and Covenants 88, 78 to 80. If you can find them quickly and read for us. Eight eight one one eight. First, anybody has seen it? And then eight eight seventy eight to eighty. You have seen, okay? Strakalibala. Yes, one one eight. Okay, and <coughs> and as all have known faith. Seek ye diligently and teach one another words of wisdom. Yes, seek ye out of the best books words of wisdom. Seek learning even by study and also by faith. Thank you, Sir Karibala. Seek knowledge out of the best what? The best books. Seek learning. Seek knowledge. One of my role models is called, was called Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin lived in the US and he died in 1790 at the age of, I think, 79. Benjamin Franklin, I always ask people to Google him. There's a, 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 a biography called Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin is the man who started the post office in the US. The idea of post office, it was Benjamin Franklin. And eventually it spread to the whole world. This, um, what is it called, the conductor, what is it called, um, a lightning conductor, arrester, the lightning arrester, is the man who invented it. You know, he made so many inventions. But how did he do that? Benjamin Franklin, didn't have a formal education. He had stopped when his parents died at uh, around P4. So his, his, his eldest brother, who had a printer and w was uh, printing a newspaper for the local town, invited him to go and live with him. Imagine P4. And he gave him a job as an, <laughs> as an apprentice on one of the machines, running the machines. But because he was just so curious, he wanted to find out how it runs, how it's done, and you know printing those days, you'd arrange letters to form a word, and then, so he decided that he had to pursue education. He had to pursue knowledge. But then, those days in the 1700s in the US, education, to pursue education was a difficult thing because there weren't many schools so he decided that he would do it on his own. So he would borrow a book. To begin with, the newspaper that they would produce, he would not go to bed without having read all of it. Remember he was before. Some of the words were hard to understand. So he decided that he would borrow books and read. And so he would go to somebody in the town, somebody he knew they had books in their house, and you can say, can you please lend me a book to read? And then, you know, people with the books, they say, ah, you're going to lose the book, or you're going to spoil it, or you're going to... He says, no, 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 I commit. I'll bring it as it is. I'll bring it back. And so they begin to lend him books. And then he realized that him reading alone, there are things he would not understand very well. Yet, if he got others, he would understand better. So, he began to talk to other young people. 
and said, can you join me so that we can read together? And so he got about five, about ten. And then they began to read. So now he would ask them, go borrow a book, each one of you. Bring it to the pool so each one of us can share, you know, and read it. Then he saw eventually that it was taking a lot of time, everybody to read that same book, to go around. Then he said, you know what we do? When you, each one of us brings a book, we say, you go and read this one. You go and read that one. You go and read that one. Then come and share. Summarize, you know, the information. Then come and share with us. And that's what they would do. So each one would read a book, summarize. Then on an allotted time, they would come and share. And so they learned a lot. That way, he acquired a lot of knowledge, he acquired a lot of skills, and he began to make those inventions. A lot of them. When you Google him, you will see. Eventually, at the top of his career, because he got into politics and he agitated for independence for America, and eventually he became the U.S. ambassador to, 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 to London and then to France, and he became a great, great, great person. And he's considered one of the 100 most influential Americans that ever lived. But it all stemmed from the desire to get knowledge, to acquire knowledge, and teaching himself. So I request each one of us here, please. Somebody here mentioned that when you have got, was it James? When you have got five hours, and you look back and you have wasted five hours seated there doing nothing, you have lost a lot. Because that time will never come back. So let us always find something to do. Let us always find something to read. That way we are going to expand our knowledge. And let me tell you, this is just the beginning. In the years, in the years to come, this place will not be enough for us. This place will not be enough for us for people graduating with degrees and master's degrees. This place. And let me tell you something. In the next few years, if you are diligent and you keep pursuing your education, you are going to be one of the great people we are going to have in this country, Uganda, and all over the world. <laughs> Don't ever demean yourself. Don't ever belittle yourself. Just determine that you are going to pursue this education. This education is going to take you places. Somebody read for us, please, DMC 8 to 8, 78 to 80. Okay, at the back. Can you read loud, Jackson? doctrine and the law of the gospel, in all things that pertain unto the kingdom of God, that are expedient for you to understand, of things both in heaven and in the earth, and under the earth, the things which have been, things which are, things which must shortly come to pass, things which are at home, things which are brought, the wars and the free parts, of the cities of the nations, and the judgments which are on the land knowledge also of countries and of kingdoms, that he may be prepared in all things, and I shall send you again to my divine recording, where unto I am called to the mission which we have commissioned you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, in, the, in, the, in those verses, they're telling us to study, to study law, to study geology, the things under the earth. Now we are talking of mining, of mining oil, the other day they said they, as Uganda we have huge deposits of, deposits of gold. Who are going to mine those things? Who are going to be employed in the mining of those minerals? You know, talk about law. You know, the, 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 the judgments of la on, on, on land. Now what are we seeing on TV every day? Wrangles on law. I mean on, uh, on land. People are being chased off their land. What is going to happen? Who is going to sign in for them? Let us study both matters of faith but also matters of the world from the best books. And then we'll stand tall. And then 
life will be good for us. Now, what are, what are the principles we, 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 we get from that? Number one, we have understood that we should pursue knowledge and wisdom relentlessly. Number two, that spiritual knowledge is more important than secular knowledge. That is not to say that when we pursue um, spiritual knowledge, we should not pursue um, secular knowledge. Three, education is a key to opportunity. We have heard that at length. Education is key to opportunity. Because a person without knowledge, where will opportunity find you? Where? Four, the Lord will guide us to areas of learning that will help us better serve others as we pray and get up and go and pursue. And five, learning is a lifetime endeavor. Learning never ends. Never. Remember, dear friends, that the world, I see most of us here are young people below 30, Remember that the world in which you are getting has got fierce competition. The word is fierce competition. But armed with knowledge, armed with education, you should never fear. When thou art prepared, thou shalt, thou shalt not fear. Thou shalt not fear. So let us arm ourselves with the knowledge. There are some quotations that I'd like to share with you here. The first one is from President um, Russell M. Nelson. And he says, the obtaining of an education is a religious responsibility. The obtaining of an education is a religious responsibility. Therefore, whoever is here and is religious should pursue education. Actually, speakers before me have said it's even a commandment, as you have read, you have just read in the scriptures. It's a commandment. So the, 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 it's not optional. Like we obey the law of, 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 of tithe, like we obey the law of chastity, even the law of obtaining knowledge and education should be um, understood the same way and pursued the same way. You know, uh, you are a heart surgeon. He replied, yes, I am. He said, how long did it take you to pursue that education? I said, well, um, Five years of university, first degree, four years of university, second degree, and four years of university, third degree. Thank you. And this young person looked at him and said, Ah, that is too many years. I can't do that. Then Edan Nelson looked at him and said, Well, it depends on what you want to become. My dear brothers and sisters, we have been asked by the earlier speakers not to drop out of the course. Please don't drop out. I implore you. Don't drop. Don't ever think of dropping out. Whenever that temptation comes to you, remember the quotation that uh, President Kilama read to us. I hope you remember it. I'll ask him to share it with all of us. You know, that when things are tough, just do what? Keep going. Whatever happens, whatever people say, keep what? This is an Abulemi could have easily got discouraged when her husband said, but you're already, you're already living in the future. I wonder how, eh, eh? What are, why are you suffering? But in her heart, she said, mm, 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 let me do what? And she, she is. And I'm sure she would like to go on. But she has a degree already. 
She would have said, after I have a degree, I even, I even have a job. Huh? So that would be Thank you. Thank you very much. So let us um, keep pursuing it. Now, President Nelson, before he became an apostle, he was one of the best surgeons in the world. And his diary was ever full of appointments to conduct her surgeries in China, in Japan, in Europe, in, you know, one of the best. Because he pursued education. <coughs> um, then again from President Nelson, NIJ is always required to provide lift over opposing forces. Those same laws apply in our personal lives. Whenever an, an undertaking is begun, both the energy and the will to, 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 to endure are essential. So we're talking about enduring. Then uh, President Hinckley said, acquire all of the education that you can, even if it means great sacrifice while you are still young. You will bless the lives of your children. You will bless the church because you will reflect honor to the work. Now, us here, when we pursue education and get a better life and become successful, our children will be beneficiaries because we will be able to afford good schools. The cost of education today, I hear that a nursery, a nursery kid in a good nursery school pays a million shillings. In a nursery, a million shillings. In the next five years, how much is it going to be? So let us pursue education so we can be able to afford. Then President Hickey again, the Lord wants you to educate your minds and your hands. Not only your minds, but your minds and your hands. From D&C, section 50, verse 24. That which is of God is light. And he that receiveth light and continueth in God receiveth more light. And the light groweth brighter and brighter until the perfect day. My dear brothers and sisters, as you pursue the faith and keep it and endure, and endure to the end and pursue education, you will become a bright star. In your life, in the life of those around you, especially your family, in the church, and in the community. So pursue education. Then President Nelson said, those who impulsively drop out and cut short their education frustrate their realization of their own potential. You have got a great potential. You have got a great potential. Like Benjamin Franklin, you have got good potential. What is that? Don't cut it short. Don't cut it short. Pursue it to the end. Pursue it to the end. And then, and then, you look back and thank and God. Back and thank then you get out and you get um, out of there. Um, out of there. Lastly, <coughs> in 2019, in 2019, when uh, the cup came uh, to, to, uh, 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 to, uh, to inaugurate uh, this program, uh, this program, Ed and Sister Williams. Ed and Sister Williams. Ed and Williams had a PhD, Ed and Williams had a PhD in chemistry. This year there, this year there, you may remember. You may remember. He had a PhD in chemistry. A PhD in chemistry. And, his wife and his wife had a master's degree, had a master's in, degree education. in education. bachelor's, the master's, then PhD. And then ask you a question, do you think it was easy? He said, no, it was not. It was days of sleepless nights. It was lots of trouble. But I endured to the end. And thank God, I obtained it. And said, did I remain the same? No. It took me from this level to that level. 
And then he concluded. He said, so my dear friends, we have brought, the church has brought you this opportunity here of this BYU Pathway program so you can obtain an education. Now, whether you pursue this education or not, time will do what? Will pass. Time will still pass. Do we understand what that means? Time will still pass. So, whether you, you say, ah, Yabwe, and you stay at home, and other pursue their four years, their five years of sleepless nights, of hard work, your time will also do what? Still pass. And then they'll graduate with their degrees. Yeah? Maybe they, they'll be 30 years, maybe 35. But you'll also be 30 years or 35. Do you understand? They'll have their good degree. And you, what will you have? Let us use this opportunity while it still lasts. Because we don't know for how long it will last. But while it lasts, let us use this opportunity to pursue this education. Therefore, I'd like to congratulate you once again. Thank you for enduring. Thank you for spending sleepless nights. Please continue. Don't give up. And like a pledge to do, I am going to join you soon. Now. Thank you for that hand clap. But, but just now, have mercy on me. Sleep, spending sleepless nights. But I'll endeavor. I'll endure. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Kamya, for those wonderful, wonderful words. And thank you, Aztec Presidents. What a blessing we have to have uh, our leaders uh, inspire us in many ways. Um, I know you're all familiar with, uh, with this quote. Behind every successful man, there is a what? Now, you're going to note down this other note. Behind every successful boy student is a pathway missionary. A hand clap for pathway missionaries. So, and I wish to invite the team, because we have all passed through the hands of pathway missionaries, isn't it? So they sacrifice a lot. This is volunteer work. No one is paid. They spend sleepless nights. They have to uh, buy their own data, you know, just to fulfill the commandment that Heavenly Father tells us to have an education. So I invite the team. Um, Elder Sakanabo. <laughs> Sister Sakanabo, uh, Sister Vicky Navide, uh, Elder Chikure. Elder John, um, Elder Katimbo is not with us, he's, he's up country, um, and Sister Gertrude, uh, Elder and Sister Wafula, yeah, so we're missing three, so this is the pathway missionary team, okay, so we need to continue praying for them so that they they could uh, keep up with the spirit, okay? And uh, for information, because we need each, each member to join the, the program, that is why we shall ask you as well, because you ambassadors, you've been in the program, let, us, let it be also your duty, okay, to share your experiences with fellow members that they join the program, as we also do our best as uh, pathway missionaries. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, 
All right, so we're getting to the end of the program. Um, now, of course, we have our certificates. Um, is James Ochara here? Yes. So for those of you later who may want to have some envelopes, he can help you with the envelopes to put your certificates there. Okay. And then um, from here, we shall have a group photo. You know, in the previous graduation, we requested as a students to come for a photo, and they didn't come. When they didn't, when they didn't appear in the photo, they said, I can't see myself. <laughs> now, what is that? You call someone to come for a photo, they don't come. When the photo is published, then they begin to, to wonder why they're not there. Can you be there when you're, you haven't stood in the photo? There are no miracles in taking photos. <laughs> <laughs> so we ask you, let's go for a group photo. Maybe the side will be better at the, at the courtyard, basketball courtyard. Take a group photo. Okay. And, uh, all right. Of course, there are so many that work behind the scenes. Um, my pathway OB, President Baju, could you please come? <laughs> Yeah, President Baju yeah, works a lot behind the scenes, a representative of this of this tech. You know, helps coordinate BYU pathway. Uh, President Baju, thank you. And and also yeah. <laughs> since he's representing the host presidency, yeah, he will tell us uh, regarding the refreshments and, and so forth. <laughs> That's a difficult one, but that is true, that's a tough one. So uh, I'd like to congratulate all the graduates, all the students who are hanging in there. I want to say yeah. that it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be possible. When we do all we can and we persist, then it becomes easy. So, for the task I've been given, uh, for the graduates who contributed uh, to be refreshed, the service provider will be issuing coupons to you, and you'll use those coupons to access the refreshments. That is how we're going to operate. We have uh, done the, the awareness about uh, the refreshment, and so it was uh, an option for you to either contribute and be refreshed, or you can uh, refresh yourself. <laughs> Unless there's any question about that. The service provider, I think, is here already. Bishop Dalvin. Yeah, he's already here. So are we good to go at 1,300 hours? We must be. Okay, so uh, those who uh, participated in the contribution, just prepare. Uh, Bishop will take care of us. Okay. But you can stay and uh, live at will. There's going to be music being played here, and uh, we can take more photos, and we can still have fun. Yes, Elder Kamil. Yeah, so that next time they can also contribute. So <laughs> it's okay. Uh, maybe those who contributed would want to share with others. That is all good. But the service provider will, will, will guide us on, uh, on where he's going to take care of those who've uh, contributed. Most likely in the CS room, that's where you'll access the refreshment. Okay. 
think that's it. Thank you, Prince Baju. Wonderful OB, the BYU pathway. Okay. Um, we shall be closing with him 89. A closing prayer will be Brother Wanjira Livingstone. Uh, of course, but before you go to that, we shall uh, have a short. Uh, we shall have a short testimony from Sister Kalibala. Uh, yes, and then we we close the program. You're welcome. Yeah, since we are one, I'll, I'll be closed by <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, everyone, upon this achievement in life. Um, my short testimony will be about uh, this education journey has been very divine in my life. Nevertheless, I had received some education, but there is nothing that I can comprehend with the certificate that... I've received at Brigham Young University, Idaho. I brag about it. Um, I even tell him that I'm an American student. Don't, don't joke with me. <laughs> so if any person just flat arounds with me, or oh, he went to Makerele or Chambogo, I just tell them, do you know my certificate is very heavy than you? <laughs> I just make joke of them. But I feel proud for the document and um, this education that I received uh, because I got an opportunity to work with an American company because of just my certificate. The company is called PricewaterCoopers. It's located in the US and I work in the robotics department. So I deal with robots. <laughs> because of my certificate. So my advice to fellow students, because I'm still continuing, don't joke with these educational documents. Don't let them sleep at home. Don't let them to, 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 to be under the pillows and you start crying again. This education journey is to wipe away the tears that you have cried all years long. Get this document, look for a job. If you fail to look for a job, create your own job. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I share that testimony, by the way. Yes, I know that what she has said is true. And, uh, and of course, we used to say, after having uh, meals, when we joined the church years ago, that uh, after eating and drinking, the church is true, isn't it? Now education, the church is what? It's true, isn't it? Yes. So we may not eat and drink, but the church will, will remain what? True. With the education, not so. Yes. So th thank you so much. Uh, uh, President, uh, President Okello, would you please come and chorus us uh, closing him? my life, then why should I fear by day and by night his presence is near it is my salvation
and we are so grateful for BYU Pathway and also BYU Idaho. We are so grateful for our prophets and we are all grateful for the accomplishment of this education. <laughs> Father, as, we, as our leaders have told us to always continue so that we may not look at this to be the first, we pray that you send the Holy Ghost to always be there to encourage us and to be with us in all, what, on, in all our endeavors. So that Father may have that spirit and encouragement to always complete our degrees. As Father, we are going home. We pray that Father, you protect us, protect our leaders. And also, Father, for those who are going to have the refreshment, may you bless them that may be, they get energy and be strengthened in it. As we live here, we pray that we may go safely and have all our families together with us. And I do pray all this in the name of the Savior and even Jesus Christ. Amen. So, uh, in three to five minutes, let's go and stand in front of the banner and try and see if we can get a good picture there. Three to five minutes, okay, for the photo. Thank you very much. Happy celebrations.